This is what I'm going to show you how to make in this video. As always, you can get this full project file, samples, mini, presets, literally everything from this video is available at the top of the description on my website. It's a really great way to support me. I don't make a whole lot off of YouTube, but I've been making a ton of these types of tutorials lately, so if you enjoy these, definitely go grab this. But it's also not just about me. This is a really great way to support yourself because by grabbing this template, you will honestly make your best music that you've ever made. You know, this is really designed to help you out and help get you to that next level and get you past where you're struggling or just give you some new inspiration wherever you may be on that spectrum. But yeah, so link is at the top of the description. Don't miss out, guys. While it's available, it's a really, really high-quality template, and it'll help you make the best tracks of your career. Thank you so much for the support, and let's dive in. All right, so we're at 136 BPM, and the first thing up here would be the main kick and snare. So a lot has been said about the sort of like garage groove and how to get that feel and that swing. To me, on the most basic level, it boils down to these two things, a good kick and a good snare. And if you listen, it's really like just call and response, right? Like boom. So when I start one of these kinds of beats, you always start with the kick and the snare. You know, a lot of times, like with almost every other style, I would do the kick and then the bass. But here it's kick and snare and then bass. Because that really is the foundation of the groove. Like all, everything else you're hearing here is really like just interfacing with that. Like it's all relative to... You know, without that, it's all just kind of like bouncing around in space, right? So that really is like the foundation of it. And so we have this nice, just big, fat 909 kick. Also, the kicks are a lot more punchy than you might think, too. Like, when I used to hear Garage early on, I used to think, oh, they're using the short little kick. It might seem like that because it's like a very tight, you know, kind of punchy groove. But this is like, don't get it twisted. This is a very big 909 kick. And then for the snare, it's two layers. So we got this one room shot. And then this one, you can hear they're kind of like two different sounds. And when you put them together, you get this one really nice. Also, what you'll notice is there's some moments where they don't play at the same exact time, also. Kind of like that, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, and you'll notice those are completely dry as well. There's no effects on those. It's just good samples. Turn them up and let it be right on top of the mix. So then, the next kind of like foundational drum would actually be this. Just the main hi-hat, right? So now if we play that with the other elements... There it is. And this one's really just about getting the right sample. Like, it's not too long, but it's also still very punchy. Like, it's not small by any means. And yeah, then we have all this little percussion. Which this, if you play it without the main drums, really sounds like it's floating around in space. But you can hear it's all these little, like, kind of skippy... percussion like this so you can see we have a few different things so there's like this little snare which just comes at the end of every two bars there's all these little percussions like kind of some smaller rim shots i have these which is like a bunch of hi-hats i did those in the actual arrangement view because it just Sometimes I like arranging the groove that way. And then I also have this one, which is a nice element. Like, if you hear that on top of the main hi-hat. It's just this open hi-hat that hits once in the middle of every two bars. And you just get, like, a nice little, like... You can hear that. You know, it kind of, like, transitions to groove. Like, it works together with the bass line, right? If you listen to the bass... See what I mean? You get that, like... 
into the next half. And that is like really how you can have all these little things working together. It's like little stuff like that that kind of like just fits into the rest of the groove. And then after that, the only drum we have left would be this live shaker. And yeah, a lot of times, you know, with this style, obviously these very like program tight percussions are really more of what you want. But I will say like when you have this whole drum groove without the shaker, and then you bring it in, you hear the difference, like that adds a lot. And so yeah, we just got that. And then we have the bass line. So you can see here's the MIDI on this one. It's actually really simple. We're just going between two chords, just F and E. But it's really like the groove that's being played with those chords. And also, we're kind of breaking the scale here. So we're in this like F minor thing. But by adding E, it kind of like throws it off. Because if you look, all the notes here are just pretty basic F minor scale notes, right? Like F, G sharp, which would be the minor third, C, which would be the fifth. Like those three notes right there are just like a basic F minor chord. This C sharp, which is the sixth. But then when you throw in this E, don't know, no. It's like that almost like evil kind of very UK sounding. And then over here, since this one just does, again, that's just like in the scale, that burn, 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 burn. Like that feels very in key, but then it, it's almost like then this just feels even more like off, but it's a really nice feeling. So, you know, this stuff doesn't always have to just be super, super rigid musically. Really just finding some notes and keep it simple. And really it's about that pattern again and like that. How that's grooving off of the kick and the snare. Now, for the sound, this one's made with three layers. So we have this. We have this. And then we have this. So the first one here is like this kind of like FM organ pluck type of sound. This is made with operator. We got a three sine waves here. You can see with these like shorter envelopes. So what's happening really, most of what you're hearing is actually oscillator A and B. See, if I turn off C, and even if you wanted to, you could just turn off oscillator C and use these like this. That sounds good as well. But basically, so you can see this one's up plus four. So you get like this kind of plucky organ thing. But then when you add in this one, see how this has a really short envelope? So all you're hearing on this one is just like the punch at the start. You don't even hear it while these two are ringing out because you can see their envelopes are longer. This one, you're just hearing that little at the start. So if I turn that up more, you can hear it for real. See how it's just like a click at the start? There we go. And that's a really good FM trick. Like, because you can sit there all day with a transient shaper and try to make that bigger. Or you could just do it in the synth patch. We've got a little bit of chorus ensemble. And then I've just got a high pass filter on there so it doesn't get in the way of the bass. This next layer is made with analog. It's very simple. It's just two square waves with a bandpass filter with a bunch of resonance, also a little bit of chorus and a high pass. And this is really just meant to fill in the low mids because if you listen to the sub and that bass I just showed you, this is really the sound, right? Like this is really what we're aiming for. But if you listen, like it's kind of missing something in the low mids. So I just added in. See like this thing, when you play it on its own, you're like, why would you have this like 303 kind of thing in there? But it actually, it ends up just sounding like part of the organ bass. And it really fills in that space. And that's where you can really like make a difference. And you know, it's something you wouldn't even hear probably even if you're a producer. But it just makes that sound like it's so much fatter. And then this operator, which is just a square wave. And a little bit of a saw wave as well, an octave up with no FM though. And then a low pass filter with a slight envelope. And so that's just getting that like deep subby frequencies. 
We have some effects which just kind of fill in. You know, these are just like these little sounds that pop in and out. I want to show you those. Those are important because I think if you forget those, it's one of those things where like you could be listening to your track and then listening to a reference or listening to like the pros and going like, wow, why am I, why is my track not matching up? And a lot of times it's just because you're missing the little sound here and there. All right, then we have these keys. So here we're kind of just playing around. You can see actually we even break the scale a little bit here too. Like, okay, so we're starting with a basic F minor chord. But look, then we're going E and B, which technically if we're in F minor, B is not in that key. But, I mean, it sounds cool. So again, like, with this stuff, you know, it's not always just super... Yeah, you can hear that sounds good, even though we are technically breaking the scale. And then this one... So this is actually like this G minor chord, but I inverted it. There, we got a, an E minor chord. So again, it's like all kind of breaking. But also it's not, because if you keep it really simple to just like two chords like that, you can do these little things where you break the scale, and it's still going to just sound like it's like kind of artistic, you know? So for this, I'm just using this, I believe this is tension. And then this is like just this sample. Looped. And then I've got a bit of chorus on the group, a little bit of drum bus, and then the last thing down here are these audio stabs. Which if I play those with, I'll play those with the bass line and with that last thing I showed you. So these are really like reactive. Like I already had the bass line and these little like mini stabs are the ones where we're like putting in the chords ourselves and then i just added these kind of like just that extra bit of groove on top of that again this is one of those things if you miss it you're going to be wondering why your track doesn't quite stack up to the pros and it's very simple these are all just audio stab samples you know it's important to use a bit of these because they add a lot of texture and give you something that you can't quite get if you just have to program the chords for every single one of these. And then on the group of those, it's just a little bit of echo. Again, very simple, but it adds that last little bit of groove. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, literally everything from this video is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely don't miss out, guys. While it's available, this is one of the best ones, or one of the best ways that you can make your music better today. If you've been struggling or you just need some new inspiration, this is something proactive that you can actually do right now that you can say like, this really actually helped me make my best music and get where I'm trying to get. So, link is at the top of the description. Everybody go grab that. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.